All right, nojumper.com. I'm here with uh, Zach of hey, FTP, Fuck the Population. Uh, how's it going, Zach? What are you doing? Chilling, man. Just got back from my studio, just packing orders and shit. Yeah, yeah. Just, like right around the corner. Right. So you, you're from L.A., right? Yeah, born and raised in L.A. and shit. What area? Uh, I was born in Inglewood, but grew up in like Culver City and then moved out to Crenshaw when I was like 12 or 13. Okay. Crenshaw and Rodeo. Yeah. And so do you have a pretty, like, like how would you describe your, your upbringing? Was it, uh, was it rough? Nah, that's cliche. Like, everybody be like, oh, I had a rough... I was, nah, I was straight. I mean, my dad's was like a little gangbanger, like a little fucked up dude, but it was straight, you know what I mean? My mom's took care of me. Yeah. So at what age did you, uh, did you start your first brand? Was, was it always FTP or did you have yeah, something else going before that? FTP. It was just spelled backwards. It was like KCUF, the population. Uh -huh. I was 10th grade in high school and like the school was like, people were just tripping. So I spelled it backwards just to make it a little bit more safer. Who even put it in your head that you could potentially start your own clothing line? I mean, that was just me. I mean, I used to see Phil and Kobe of, like, Dirtbag and Death Precision do that shit back when I was younger. But, I mean, I just knew I could do that shit. Right. And so did you, um, from, like, an early age, like, what, what was, like, your intention? Or, like, were, were you a graphic design kid? Or were you, like, a skate kid? Or, like, what were you trying to get across with your brand in, like, the early days? Just a message, like, that you can, that you need to be yourself. Like, kids don't even necessarily have to buy FTP, but I just want kids to know that they can think for themselves and, and just do... Just do what they want to do. Right. Were you, were you going with the whole, like, offensive side of things, like, early on? Like, were you, like, obviously with the name and shit, but did you always kind of set out to offend people? Like, you've definitely offended a lot of fucking people. Yeah, people are pretty pissed. I mean, I haven't set out to piss people off, but the, 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 just the, way, I, the way my thought process is, that's how it goes. Just the designs I think of are just pretty gnarly and fucked up. Right. And it goes, it comes across that way, you know so what I mean? When was your first, the first time you ever really, really pissed somebody off with your, uh designs um shit right when i started in in high school 10th grade i think they banned my the banned the brand from school in uh, 11th grade nobody could wear it that you got suspended if you're caught wearing it that shit is cool to me still <laughs> yeah just that you were able to have that kind of effect yeah did you, so you got suspended or did did people get suspended for wearing kids it? got suspended for wearing it i got in trouble too but i mean you couldn't wear it you would get like teachers would start tripping out and you get sent to the principal office like how would you describe when people first started fucking with the brand like did people just sort of gravitate towards it because of the fact that it was offensive or were you were you popping in in high school were you like nah, I'm just a, i was kid? a little kid like a little just stay to myself kid i uh -huh. mean i think it's because of the name people really started fucking with it and then the words ftp because people correlate or relate that to like fuck the police or whatever. Yeah. So I think that's that's why I started a little booming or whatever. It's got like a little bit of a, a universal appeal because people do yeah, think it people means people can fuck still the relate it to like fuck the police. That's not what I wanted to mean, but I mean people that might be why some people like it. So let's say when you grad did you graduate high school? I did, I did. When you graduated high school, like where was your mind at in terms of your brand at that point? Like what did you think that the the potential was when you cuz how old are you right now? I'm 21. Okay, so when you're 18, what was your mentality on on I, the potential? Uh, I could see it cuz there was like little like uh not LA Times, but one of the little newspapers did an article on me when I was like 17. Okay. I think that's when I knew like I could really take this to like whatever whatever level I want to. Uh-huh. Like when do you feel like you started to hit the mainstream or like not not the mainstream but like the streetwear mainstream in terms of getting any attention and stuff um maybe when i dropped the uh, columbine t right and that, so what, what year been, was that or when was that, that? might have been last year uh-huh that's when a lot of people went crazy and started to notice the brand i don't i definitely don't want to be mainstream at all though i'd rather be like low-key as possible when you say the columbine t can we explain uh, exactly what this was i've, I've seen it online yeah, but a lot yeah, of people probably it, uh, haven't it was an ash gray tee that said Columbine Physical Education, just like a normal like middle school PE shirt would. And then on the back it said, do you believe in God? Which is what um, I think Dylan or Dylan might have said right. to the the person that was dying or whatever. You know what I mean? He said that like while he was doing the shooting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do that on the back of the T-shirt. And so when you put something like that on a shirt, obviously you know that you're going to get a reaction, right? Or did, did that come into your head right away? Like, that was, oh, I'm going to get That came people. into my head, and I just wanted to do the T because I had that idea fresh, and then I just made it. I wasn't really thinking about, oh, this is about to get a little a lot of buzz or whatever. I just right. put it out. Like, how did that, 48 units or whatever, that shit sold out in like two minutes or something, like crazy. Really? And that was last year. 
that, that team went crazy. So with something like Columbine, that's obviously like before you were a little kid when that happened. Like, yeah, yeah. So what are you doing? Are you you, are you out there like researching different topics? And I was watching a documentary when I when I made that specific tea. Uh-huh. Just I just wanted to make it. I thought it would be cool. Like I didn't mean I didn't mean to go out and hurt anybody's feelings because I got a lot of emails about that shirt. Um, that's why I'm not going to re-release it ever. But just a lot of emails from like fa- like families or whatever, just gnarly shit. Do you think it's important, like as a streetwear brand or as whatever kind of brand that you might be, that you push boundaries and that like like is it important to do stuff like that because it's a promotional thing, or is it important to do stuff like that because you want to see you want people to open their mind and at least consider different things? Yeah, I just do whatever you want. I mean, that's why I, I do literally. I make whatever the fuck I want to make. I don't care whose feelings might be hurt tomorrow or the next day. Like. I'll make whatever I say, whatever the fuck I want. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, but I mean, I guess shit. Just make whatever. Can we talk about like the term streetwear? Were you were you ever uh, were you ever comfortable with that early on? Like, did it occur to you like I want to start a streetwear brand? Uh, I think back when I started, it might have been streetwear. My mindset has changed though. I don't mm-hmm. really want to be considered a streetwear brand. What do you? What is your definition of streetwear? Fucking my de- like the old school fucked and like uh, fucking awesome and like. Uh, fresh dive like old shit like cool like it was like actual shit people wore in the streets like not fucking like pink dolphin colorful like that shit is weird yeah. I don't know I don't even know what the term streetwear is anymore exactly I, I don't even want to consider myself a streetwear brand or whatever see it's a weird term because it's like like if somebody were to were to it's, it's not a title that a lot of people like proudly wear like if right. somebody said to me like oh you're a BMX dude or you're a hip hop head I'd be like yeah all right, right cool I'm down with that or you know you're a hardcore kid whatever people people wear those terms with pride but then streetwear is a weird industry because it's like it's all these different like disconnected companies that don't really seem to have that much in common except for exactly. the fact that they're sort of drawn from the same inspirations and trying to put out stuff that that people like or whatever but like you ever been to Agenda? I have, unfortunately. It's wild, right? Like, yeah. there's so much weird shit there. Like, and, and what do all these fucking people have in common is, like, the thing that I don't get, except for the fact that they want to make money. Yeah, that's agenda's uh, mad corny. I'm actually doing it this year to just, I'm going to do, like, I'm going to disrespect a lot of brands. I'm going to just go and put, like, one shirt up, like, as a joke. And I don't, it's just going to be, you'll see. It's going to be crazy. What was your first big controversial thing with the streetwear world? Because obviously you got in trouble with the, the, the Combine thing. Or not in trouble, but you um, hit some bullshit. But when did you really start to upset like the old heads in the, in the industry? Let me see. I don't know about the old heads. Because a lot of people, a lot of the old heads actually support me, uh-huh. uh, surprisingly. Like, uh, just a lot of big names support me. But I don't know. Shit, maybe the terrorist tea that pissed a lot of people off. Okay, yeah, that's a very good point. We definitely have to talk about that. Right, but I'm right. talking more about like the hundred shit and like like a lot of brands. You know, they would never have the balls to go right. at somebody more established than them. Like, what what was it? Is that just an issue where was it well thought out, or is that just you speaking your mind? Uh, the hundred shit is I just think they oversaturated the street like streetwear industry or whatever. I don't uh-huh. really fuck with them, so I just decided to diss them. The hundreds kill streetwear. Because they made, I think they made a Jesus. Uh, right, the God hates streetwear. God hates thing. streetwear. So I just flipped that and was like, the hundreds uh, killed streetwear. Right. So, you know, that's funny. I thought that was a pretty funny joke on their part because you, you ever see those signs? That, that was a ripoff of yeah, the God, rip God, God from, hates uh, fags thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is like the craziest looking sign you ever seen in your life. And so for them to do that, but you're right, like, it was weird because when I found out it was the hundreds, I was like, oh, that's a weird voice for that, that joke exactly. that I actually thought was pretty funny to be coming from, you right. know? But like, um, so can you take me through the the timeline? Like, you post that, and then did you did you hear anything from them? When nah, you they didn't Instagram? respond. Um, they never responded. When my homie was at the hundreds, like headquarters, and they were saying the dudes up there fuck with me heavy. So, I mean, I don't think they. I, I think they get it. Like, you know, their shit is played out. So I, somebody had to come at him. You know, so. it's got to be a weird perspective to be like forty running a streetwear brand, and then you got to do as like a lawyer. You. Is it their lawyers? Th- those dudes too? are lawyers. Yeah, oh, or whatever. See, I didn't know that. But like from their perspective, they probably look at you and they're like. Well, he's young, and he's got almost exactly the same mentality as we did when we started out. So even if you're hating on them because they're kind of the establishment, they sort of do have to look at it and be like, if kids are fucking with this and they, and he's hating on the, the mainstream or the, the, the industry stuff, then, I mean, maybe he has a point. Exactly. Yeah. Much respect to the hundreds, though. I mean, they are, like, the first, like, not, I mean, I, I wore that shit back in the day, like the damn um, atom bomb or whatever. Okay. But their shit, it's like, I don't know, it's done. See, it's weird for me because I'm from the East Coast, and I didn't have that, like, Stussy, hundreds, fucking diamond. Like, all that shit was, I mean, I guess people wear it on the East Coast and stuff, but it's not like it is out here where it's, like, everywhere you fucking look. Right. 
and shit's everywhere. Yeah, it's it's a an interesting Oversaturated. scene. Oversaturated. Yeah, I never really understood like the whole concept of streetwear brands that don't have something behind it. I guess right. or like I think as a brand, and I'm not saying that they don't have anything behind it or whatever. I'm just saying that as a brand, I think you need like a really strong reason to exist. Exactly. Because the whole thing with clothing is that we, we all know that this is just ridiculous. That like nobody needs more fucking t-shirts. Yeah, you definitely. go to Walmart, you can buy a $3 t-shirt and it's fine. Right. So like, um, if you're going to wear it, you got to have a message or something. Right. And then I was reading an article about you where they called you the anti streetwear, streetwear brand. How do you feel about that? <laughs> that's a good, I guess that's a good, uh, good little phrase. That's how it is. I don't really, want to put myself in a category right I see it more as like a not necessarily a gang but at the same time a gang because every kid that's wearing my shit is actually feels like they're a part of something you know right and they are you guys I, you know, I personally have their back you know what i mean right you got some high profile friends though that have helped support the brand and stuff like how do you get fredo doing a lookbook for you that's all through shit i think young gleesh okay because that's my that's my homie and but how's then, he your homie how you know him Shit, back, I fucking with him back before he blew up. Sent, sent him like a couple logo tees and shit. Okay. And just from there, we got an organic relationship. Can you get him on the podcast? Yeah, that would be lit. Because he never spoke publicly about his whole situation, and I want to. Yeah, yeah. I want to get down to the, the fucking. He'll probably the real do it story. and tell you the real. That's the realest man. That's why I fuck with him. He's not a. To me, he's not a fucking rapper. Because I don't. I don't like to hang out with rappers. He's a normal, normal human. Right. I loved it that when he got out of jail, like fucking for that shit, which is you know. You'd think most celebrities, most rappers, they would get out of jail for like a, you know, he was being charged with raping someone or, or whatever. And instead of being chill and low key about it, he just goes on Twitter and starts raging right, against some right. thought that like DM'd him and then was talking oh, shit about I've him on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. And that was the first thing he did when he got out of jail. I, I was like, that. this is the funniest shit I ever seen. Yeah, he'd be going in. He's that's reckless. That's my man, though. But yeah, that's how I got Fredo in the shit because just through like mutual homies or whatever. Right. And is it uh, is it tough getting somebody like him who you know presumably most of the time when you see Fredo wearing some shit he's he's getting paid for it right right I but, mean I wouldn't really do nothing like that again I don't really like artists and shit wearing my uh, brand just artists in general not for real but Fredo Fredo was real cool so I, it's something I just had to do like as a personal maybe like a personal achievement or whatever right but yeah it was real cool that lookbook was crazy do you think that, but this when you do something like that does that get you a shitload of attention for yeah, the brand yeah. I'm definitely not gonna sit there and act like it doesn't because that definitely boosted my brand up to it like I, I got a whatever a couple thousand followers from that or whatever but okay that's why I don't really like to use artists and shit because I just want to build this shit up by my like naturally I don't right. really have to use some man with oh, almost a million followers to get me on because I don't even I want to do that shit myself right and it's weird too because once you really start associating your brand with different artists or whatever then yeah, you're then tied to them hip hop brand or it's a fucking Rap label, trap, whatever. Right. And like three years ago, if you were a, a streetwear brand, you would have seen Trinidad James and you right. would have been like, oh, that's a good cosign. Like, I want that cosign. And then a couple right. years later, it's like that shit would make you look a totally different right. way. And it's just, you yeah, know. I don't, I don't want any cosign from any rapper, even though a lot of them, like, they fuck with me because they fuck with me as a person. But right. I don't want, like, a cosign from anybody. Who do you, uh, like, who would be, like, if you could do another lookbook tomorrow and you could get, like, any rapper to rock it? Anyone in the hip hop world, whatever, even outside that, even in music and shit, who's who's the first one that comes to mind? Shit, Drake. Nah, hell no. <laughs> like person or rapper? He's just a rapper. Just any person that's like involved in that, like person that you would want to model for you that you feel kind. Because of, like Fredo, really kind of, he probably represents the mentality of the yeah, brand, definitely. right? Um, shit, maybe like fuck. Somebody from Three Six, probably. Oh yeah, that's a good point. That's true. You grew up listening to that shit? I didn't grow up listening to it, but definitely, I mean, their shit is crazy. What did you grow up listening to? Fuck. Because people assume... West Coast hip-hop is weird. Yeah, I think I grew up probably listening to fucking radio shit, actually. Right. Whatever was on the fucking radio, I listened to. Were you uh, were you paying attention when Our Future blew up, and did that did it make you pay attention and be like, damn, that could kind of be like my shit? No, I was definitely like, I fuck with their shit back in the day. Everybody did. Their shit went crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, it was like a fucking, they were going crazy, man. Yeah, because that was like the first time that you seen like young black young, kids young from L.A. Just, just doing it and going crazy. Right, yeah. Those on, are some on, of on the homies anyway, shit. but. So you know those guys? Uh, a couple of people. A little bit. Here I don't now. know, like Tyler or anybody like that. What's well, a little disconnected now, anyway? I think. Yeah, yeah, it's still cool though, man. You gotta, re I respect what he did. Right. He started like a whole new, like almost culture. 
Right. It went crazy. Yeah. And I think he, the mo- most important thing is I think he made a lot of kids feel like they could they be could themselves some, in a yeah, way. Yeah, they could do some shit on their own or just be who they are. Like, yeah, he definitely went crazy, man. Back right. in, like, when I was in high school, that shit was going crazy. Because being in L.A. and shit, that's why I think L.A. has, like, a weird identity crisis in right. terms of hip-hop or in terms of, like, urban culture is because everybody wants to associate it with some gangbanging shit or some you know old school fucking bumping in the lack of hip hop shit yeah. but at the end of the, like when Tyler came out it's like it's more first, realistic right. it's like yeah, most of the be people weird. Had, you could be your right. fucking self you could be a skater kid like a 16 year old black skater kid is like that's common you see that all the time in LA but that wasn't being represented on like the hip hop side of things right. instead like the number one rapper is being looked at like the game but that's yeah. a whole different world yeah, in yeah. terms of like nah definitely yeah. much respect to our future they, they killed it man still yeah. killing it yeah. What about uh, Slim Jesus? What are your thoughts on him? <laughs> me, and, f- me and his fucking manager going at it real quick. Really? You got you got into it? I, I saw you not, not on into Twitter. It. No, but no, 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 no. Not into it. I mean, he's like, we be somehow texting back and forth. That's another story, though. But, Wait, uh, let's hear the story. <laughs> give me a, a part of the story. So you go on Twitter and you diss Slim Jesus. What were your thoughts when you first saw that video? That was corny. <laughs> yeah, but it's so corny that it's like... Yeah, it's really corny. Like, th- yeah, I can't yeah. even believe this is real. Yeah, corny as shit. I'm not finna go into that though, just cause like me and his manager are on a cool level. Okay, I'm not rocking with. Uh, <laughs> that's another. That's another topic, man. But is is his manager? Does he have your respect? His manager, at least. His manager fucks with me. Really? Yeah, but oh. you're not about to see a Slim Jesus for FTP. Nah, ever. Nah. <laughs> Did it hurt you in the heart when you saw Chief Keith posing with Slim Jesus for that photo? I knew it was just <laughs> him taking a fan photo. I didn't yeah, really yeah. care. Chief Keef actually had to come out and be like, y'all, like, Yo, he's not my crew. Yeah, I don't fuck with him like that. Y'all yeah. crazy. <laughs> I peeped that. Seen that. Let's go back to the terrorism thing. So you make a shirt that says what? It said, fuck the population terrorist organization. Right. That was just me just fucking just going in on, it was just a random, random thought. Like, what could I put on it? I did that, released it. That shirt went crazy. I did way too many units on that. Right. Um... Any, I'm just going to interject. I think anytime you find something that you can't say, right. that's what you got to like hone in on. Because that's what, if there's something that you can't say in conversation, then it's, there's probably some truth to it. If, right. if there's something that's just a taboo, you know? And that, right. that to me is like that kind of thing. Because you putting that on a shirt, kind of, it's, it's, even if you're not intentionally doing it, it's drawing attention to the fact that the concept of terrorism is kind of silly and well, kind of broad. The reason I actually did the T is I was like, I didn't want to put fuck the population streetwear brand. So I was like, <laughs> what else can I associate myself with? So fuck the population terrorist organization, which is more of what the damn brand actually is. Right. Fucking, it's not a streetwear brand. But uh, I did that, and then a couple weeks later or whatever, I get a little letter from, um, I think it was... Some maybe Department of Treasury or it was one of the shits. I should have brought the letter in. Right. Uh, just saying like, this is not like this tea is not okay. You need to halt sales on this tea. Blah 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 blah. Whatever. And then. But and so they they but see that's the first thing is that they can't really stop you because it's a First Amendment thing. Can't but they, necessarily. But they stop shut down me, your that PayPal, right? Crazy man. They deleted my PayPal. The Th- PayPal deletion might have been from another another incident because I sent a payment to my homie Kobe titled North Korea because that's what it was for, like a design. Oh paper. really? And then they shut my shit down. It's a lot of crazy shit. It's, it could also be back to, like, I was posting a rocket launcher on uh, Instagram and Twitter. Oh, like a real, like, you had a rocket yeah, launcher? Yeah, like a week prior. That might have, it Where the fuck did you find like, a rocket launcher? All one. <laughs> you just had the homie's house and you just happened to have it? Yeah, man. Damn, I didn't know they got down it's like that. It's my shit, though, but yeah. I don't have it at my house no more. <laughs> <laughs> um, crazy. So... Were you were you a graffiti kid when you were younger? Nah, definitely not. No, you never were. Nah. But are you like into that culture? Are you interested in it or it's what? It's cool. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not really like into the graffiti culture. I just like to make clothes. To be honest with you. Right. I mean, I'll spray some shit every now and then. Just like if I want to spray FTP somewhere. Right. Like a fucking pink dolphin billboard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> every what, now and then. <laughs> clearly, that was the next uh, <laughs> the next question here. So, what, what's your how did this Ian Connor thing happen? He does the collab with Pink Dolphin, and prior to that, did you have any kind of friendship or relationship with him at all? No, nah, I don't know the man okay. still to this day. You still never met him? No. Nah. Okay, and so he does that Pink Dolphin collab, and you, you didn't really, you didn't like it, I'm assuming? What happened? Uh, I just always think Pink Dolphin is trash. It had nothing really to do with Ian. His face just happened to be on the billboard. Right. Uh, shit, next day. I don't know if this was next day that the billboard was up, but... I had to hit the billboard up with FTP. Yeah. And so uh, what was the, the fallout from that? Uh, shit. Like what happened after? Yeah, yeah. That, actually, that shit actually boosted my damn brand too. Just really? like the Fredo shit went crazy. Like 
another thousand followers or whatever. Right. That shit. I mean, that's not what I was going for. I just wanted to tell Pink Dolphin that their shit is trash. <laughs> but, to, but so did Ian trip out on you? He did, right? He did. Got in what way? Call. Oh, a phone call. Okay. Phone call. We went at it. But I mean, I told him what's good. I mean, we're we're, we're straight now, though. What did you, you know? tell him? You were just like, I don't I don't fuck with you, or I don't fuck with Pink Dolphin. Uh, I tried to break it down. I was like, this had nothing to do with you, bro. Like, this is this is. This is towards Pink Dolphin. Right. And then we just, I don't know, we're straight. We're what do you hate about Pink Dolphin? Just the fact that this shit looks like a bunch of fucking Easter eggs or something? It looks like there should be an Easter egg hunt in the store when I drop that, by dude, it. It's just garbage, man. <laughs> it just shouldn't be streetwear. That should be, they should be, I don't know, man. Their shit is trash. So we need people like you to actually just and Cena, call Pink it Dolphin honest. is trash, too, and I hope he watches this interview. Who is it? The dude, Cena, who is runs it? that shit. Oh, he's the one who runs it or the one who owns yeah, it? Yeah, he's a little fucking bitch, too. Why? Is, did he get at you in this whole thing? Nah, he's just he's just garbage. So you never got in contact with anybody? You didn't get any legal problems? <laughs> nah. No, nothing Because like um, I never admitted to I don't know if I was even up there doing the billboard. Right. Could've Someone helped. did it. Yeah, somebody did. <laughs> um. So so then recently I saw that you posted this this tweet from Ian. I'm actually looking at it right now. Mm-hmm. Well, this is a DM. He said, "Fuck you, Pink Dolphin. Thanks for the money." A message from Ian Connor brought to you by FTP. Yep. So how am I supposed to take this? Like, what is that? How did that come about? A mind fuck. Um, shit. That's just him stealing money from Pink Dolphin. Because I was gonna do another. I was gonna hit their billboard up again. Uh huh. I thought it was Ian's face on it because somebody had texted me like, "Yo, Ian's got another billboard or whatever." Um, so I was going to go hit it up again. It's because it was Pink Dolphin, but, and then Ian DM me was like, yo, fuck Pink Dolphin. I don't care. Like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. And he said what he said. It's got to be a weird position. I would think that when he does a collab with somebody, they should make him sign papers saying that he's not going to slander the brand like six yeah, months yeah, later, yeah. right? Isn't that how yeah, this should work? Yeah. I don't really want to talk about that dude too much, though. Like, yeah. I don't really... Yeah, I feel we we go separate ways. He's cool. He's doing. His, he's on his shit. But I don't really want to talk about. Who it. else do you respect in the the streetwear world? Uh, just like Brunetti. Uh, okay. Shit, Dill, because he does pick, uh, fucking awesome, and that shit is that shit is cool as fuck to me. Right. Um, my my homies like Phil and Kobe that do dirtbag and uh and DPI and shit. Uh huh. My homie Adam does foul play. Just like I fuck with. People doing that shit without investors and like doing that shit by themselves, right? Like off a of fucking, like literally by themselves with no help and shit. Do you feel like um, it's weird when you see yourself on lists with all these other like streetwear brands, like a, multiple different lists that are like the top ten new streetwear brands, top five new streetwear right. brands? You feel weird being put in that that category? Yeah, of course. I mean, because I never expected. I mean, my brand's not any. It's not big or whatever, but I never expected any of this to happen. Like. I never expected my shit to be selling out online. Like, I'm real thankful for all of this shit. So, yeah, I, I, it's crazy when I see my shit on whatever fader list or whatever, like, whatever blog it might be, just next to some people I really fuck with and respect. Do you see um, Do you see kids out in public rocking the shit, and do you, do you go up to them and say thank you, or do you just keep, because I know you're all about being anonymous and shit. I keep it pushing, but that shit is real crazy. Like, I'll be at a concert or whatever, and some kid's wearing my, like, logo tee. Yeah. And I'm like, damn, like, I, I made that and shipped that to this kid personally. It's, yeah. like, it's like, real crazy. Yeah. And right. this kid has no idea who the fuck I am. Right. What about, uh, do you seriously have a Soldier Boy collab coming out? Yeah. <laughs> nah. No, nah, you're lying about that? Uh, nah, I, it was this dude. I might actually. The dude Agoff who signed us. Yeah, yeah, I know. Or I'm in he, uh, familiar with him. He uh, he might set something up. You'll see. <laughs> Damn, that'd be crazy. Yeah, do you do you really respect the Soldier Boy movement? Because I think he he's a person who doesn't get enough credit for uh, his contribution he, over Boy the years. Started the internet, man. Yeah, in a lot of ways, right? For real. I think his Twitter bio used to say something like that. He said like King of the Internet. He something. did. You gotta like really look into that shit. But Soldier Boy like made it possible for a lot of people. Really? Were you were you fucking with uh, with Soldier Boy when you were real young? Yeah, like the damn Bay the Napes. I forgot what year that was. Yeah, yeah. Bay the Napes song and all the little dance songs and shit. That's it, that your, the Bathing Ape Soldier Boy song is a big introduction to streetwear for a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> Could be. So he should have got a check for that. When Fader did that thing about you though, they called you despicable. They called your, your clothes within despicable. Right. How's I that feel? Look that word up. Talk <laughs> about it. What is that? Mean? It means like disgusting or like hor- horribly offensive. You know, oh, like word. super super just awful. I don't know. Shit. What they want to think could be. That's how they get the, the title going, though. Yeah. Yeah. Could be despicable. FTP <laughs> despicable clothing. Yeah. Is this your full time job at this point? Do you you make enough money off it? Because you have an office up the street, so that's a good right. step, right? Right. Um. 
Shit, for the past like five years, I've been working at Huff. Oh, okay. Um, so that's another brand you respect, or what's your relationship with them like? Yeah, definitely. When I was 16, I used to camp out at the little warehouse sales. Um, I talked to, eventually talked to Keith, the owner, um, and just asked him, like, what's my next step? Because I have this brand. And then he was like, you should find an internship at a brand you like. And I was like, can I get one with you? And then he was like, yeah. And then from there, from like, I think 17 on the two weeks ago, I've been working for Keith and, and Huff and shit. And so how would you, like, what kind of stuff did you start off doing there? Um, just warehouse shit, like packing boxes or packing online orders. How did you, like, move up in the whole thing? Like, how did you earn their respect? They, just being there for a while. Just, right. like, normal job shit. Like, eventually moved from there to, like, some international sales assistant and then on the social media or whatever. Oh, okay. So you were doing social media type stuff for them, too? Yeah, yeah. Do you find that it's hard to find, like, dudes in the, the streetwear industry or whatever that are down to help out young kids? Because that's kind of the, the pattern that, that happens yeah. is these established nobody, brands, they nobody hire kids. help anybody. Is that the, the vibe that you get? Like, nobody wants to help each other? Uh, from some places. I mean, I tried to find a job at, like, a little streetwear company or whatever back when I was young. But nobody was really fucking with me. Right. So, I mean, I'm thankful for, like, Keith and shit. It's got to be weird for a dude like that or, like, Supreme or Diamond or whatever where they, they bring these dudes up working for them and then those dudes just end up being better in some right, ways right. or having a more raw voice than the dudes that they're working for and all right. of a sudden they're off doing their own thing and all of a sudden they're the competition. Yeah. You're I a mean, Supreme everybody fan? Gets their, everybody gets their start from some brand, though. There's a lot of, like, Mega used to work at Huff. Um, right. A lot of people get their start from some brand and then go uh, venture off into their own their own deal. What's the most important thing you ever learned from Keith? Um, just to make he was the first person that said like make whatever the fuck you want or some or make cool shit. I think was the email he said. But yeah, Keith is awesome, man. You respect his mentality, like how, like do you do you look at his mentality on the clothing brand and relate to it and just think like that's that's the kind of like person that I want to be. Like, was there anything in particular that stands out about him that makes you think like, okay, that's why he's so successful at this shit. Shit. I just fuck with him as like a human being. Like before the clothes, like I don't really, before the clothes shit, he's just a good ass human. Like he'll just give, he'll just talk to you about normal human shit, you know? Right. What's your biggest, uh, well, I was going to ask, are you a fan of Supreme? What do you think of them? Yeah. I mean, I like their stuff. I'm not out there standing in line for their shit, but I definitely, they definitely like their shit. When's the last time you stood in line? I never stood in line. Um, Maybe for a club or something, but not, not for clothes. Stood in line. Maybe back when I was 16 at the, or 17 at the warehouse, the Huff warehouse sale. Right. I don't really like lines and shit. Yeah. That shit's crazy. You, you have people, you ever seen anybody standing in line for your shit or is it not, you never, it's all online for the most it's part? It's all online. There's no, there's no way they'd be able to, but I mean. You don't sell to retailers at all? Uh, it's Four, four or five. Like uh, in the U.S. or overseas too? U.S. I get like, I have like 300 emails though from retailers trying to get my shit. But yeah. I don't really want to go out of proportion like that and see my shit on everybody fucking down the street. Like every right. other person wearing my shit. Is that that is, shit sounds backwards, but that's how I run around my brand. But is that how you think of it? Is like, I'm going to, you want to keep it exclusive to a certain extent by, by controlling the sales channels at least, right? Right. And I don't want somebody to go into like a store and, and, and base their purchase off of like a design when they don't know the backstory behind right. the brand first you know what i mean and at least like i mean maybe you like in terms of ftp maybe you get to that point sometime but like i mean you need to grow steadily like we see that with rappers you see the clothing yeah. lines it's like if they don't grow steadily it's such a huge risk of it just becoming played out or just right. getting a whack vibe about it you know right right yeah. i mean i'm not really worried about that because the kids that fuck with my shit know that it's i mean know that it's not even whack i mean right. shit they just know yeah. I don't think it'll get played out. I got a few moves coming up, though, to make sure that shit won't happen ever. What, when you think about moves, you think about doing collaborations with different people? Or, like, what, what, is, uh, what do you see as, like, the... Diff- I got a couple of different collaborations coming out with some major companies. And then I'm planning on opening my own store. Really? Yeah, yeah. What area are you thinking? Uh, L.A.? I got to see. Anywhere it's going to definitely be L.A., but I, I got to see the exact area I want it. Because I don't want it to be, like... Typical Fairfax or like La Brea. Right. It's got to be somewhere where I, I like the vibes. Describe how you feel when you walk down Fairfax. Like what what like what level of like vomit rising up in your throat do you feel when you're walking around there? <laughs> Shit, I don't even go there ever. Yeah, but it's like it's cool. A couple of the stores are cool, but it's not. It's just not my personal like vibe. Right. I don't it's even like, think the people there. I think even like the du- like the dudes from Supreme or whatever, they've been there forever. I'm, I'm sure that they yeah, kind of yeah. have that feeling too. Is like, oh, there's so much fucking yeah, whack shit homies, around here. But um, 
the street is just kind of corny to me. Like, I don't know, just a bunch of it's cool, weird ass, vibe. cool ass kids, walk, like, just, I don't know, linking up or whatever. Yeah. Shit's Something. all corny to me, man. How you got all these motherfuckers writing songs about you, like Suicide Boys and Kerpa Goop and shit? <laughs> Suicide Boys is cool as fuck. Uh, they hit or they follow. They we like follow each other and shit. Mm-hmm. And then I think we wanted to do like a collaboration together. But okay. I was like, I don't want to do clothes. So I was like, Yo, can you make a song titled this? And then they did it. And then it was that shit's crazy. That mm-hmm. shit got like a million or close to half a million on that song on YouTube or something like that. Oh really? Yeah. All right, we're gonna play the first uh, sixty seconds of that song right now in the podcast. Boom. Was the Suicide Boys fuck the population? So you hung out with those guys, or you just met them online? No, I don't know who they are at all. Oh. I, uh, we're supposed to link up, I think, in maybe Arizona. I'm gonna do a little. I'm gonna go with them on like three stops of their tour or some shit. Yeah, you got some some tour shit going on in uh, Texas right now too, right? That was what date was that on? Yeah, that was uh, maybe on the seventh. But you were you there for that? Or? I was there. Okay, you went out. And yeah, what was yeah. it? It was uh, it was me and Goth Money just. Okay. They, I just sold clothes and they did their little performance. Right. How do you know them? Just, just natural yeah. connection. I don't know actually. Just had. I just met with one of them and then all of them fuck with me. I just had Cray in here. That, that probably was what made you feel more comfortable doing the interview, right? <laughs> yeah, I, that's the homie, man. I got. I'm getting all the shy young dudes who are like popping, but like they they never did a podcast before. That's yeah. kind of my 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 aim, to be yeah. honest. Like, there's a whole lane of like podcasts available or like people that haven't done long form interviews that I think are popping, but right. that like are kind of ignored by a certain media. I don't know. Right. It's weird. Yeah, I don't know. Cray, Cray's a homie, though. All of those dudes are, are cool as shit, man. Yeah. Normal people before rappers. You, um, are you single? Are you in a relationship? What's your I'm status? I'm single, man. I'm chilling. I'm yeah. just focused on my brand right now. I just want to get it to where I want to get it to. Like, before I focus on, uh, like a girl Settling down, a, all that bullshit. You're 21. You don't need to think about that. Or, my yeah, advice. I, I mean, I had a little girl or whatever, but I'm chilling. Just chilling, man. What's your uh, drug use perspective? You hang out with a lot of motherfuckers that are drinking lean and popping pills and shit. Yeah, yeah. Um, you into that I stuff? I don't do any of that shit. Ever? Nah. You don't smoke weed? Nah, I smoke weed. Okay. But uh, I don't do, like, the lean and the Zans or whatever. Right. I mean, the homies do that shit, though, and that's what they want to do, so let, let them do it. But do you think that if you were fucking with shit like that, that you would have a harder time focusing on the business? Most definitely. Are you an obsessive personality in terms of, like, is this all you think about? The, the brand? Yeah. All the time. That's right. the only thing I think about. And is that, uh, I don't know, like, like say you go into work on an average day. Like, what are you, what are you working on? Or like, what's your mentality when you wake up first thing in the morning, actually? That's probably even a better question. Shit. Nowadays, because I need to survive. Like, I have my own spot. I need to eat. So now it's like, what am I going to drop next? Right. Even though I don't want to drop too many clothes, but I still need to fucking make the $895 a month so I could pay my rent. Right. At my house. And, um... So, so what do you do? You, are you on a schedule in terms of like putting stuff out, or do you just kind of make stuff as you feel like it and just, just put it out? Make it as I as I feel, just if it's if the timing is right. Like, uh, I don't really fuck with seasons too much. I do them sometimes, but I don't fuck with like releasing seasons. I'll just release whatever the fuck I want to release whenever, like whenever. Yeah, as it goes online. Yeah. Damn, dude. If you have a store though, it's going to be harder to keep up the whole anonymous thing. <laughs> I won't. I won't be working it. Yeah, true. You could be in there with the mask on or whatever, but then that's a whole other expense if you can't work there. Nah. I'm going to have the homies work there. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying Um, to do that shit, though. I got this fucking quote from Virgil right here. 
Streetwear is like disco. When it started, disco was cool, but the term didn't age well and neither did the genre. All of us who are classified as streetwear, it's up to us how it's defined and that's why I hope the evolution of, uh, you start talking about his brand, but he said, I think that's why I hope that the evolution of off-white is so apparent. The definition of off-white is the gray area between two concepts, streetwear and proper fashion. Yeah. And I thought that was a pretty interesting concept because think about like quote. disco. That was the hottest shit in the world in the 80s. <laughs> Hell yeah, that shit was popping. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, it's a weird term though because it's like you still have music that comes out that could kind of fall into that category now. But it's like that, it went so big for a while that then they just, it killed the whole just, the whole classification. Yeah. yeah, that's a good ass quote though. I, I feel that. Most definitely. Yeah. Um, shit. What do you think of Virgil? What do you think of the whole off-white thing? Um, I don't really pay attention to it. That's not like on your radar? Nah, he could be a cool person. I uh, I think I dissed him the other day. Oh, really? There was like a complex streetwear class taught by Virgil or some shit. I, I just didn't know. I just didn't like that shit. So I just, he could be a cool person. though. No, he might be. The off-white shit might be cool too. But I don't pay attention to it. But do you... um? Do you think about that though? Like when you're you're saying some shit, talking some shit on Twitter, does it occur to you like, you know, to be careful because you want you want to keep like the possibility of working with people in the industry alive, or you, you nah, feel comfortable just going in? I feel comfortable saying whatever I want, like because I don't really like I don't care. Like what's the worst that could happen? Like I don't I'm not trying to work with him, so I don't really give a fuck. And see, so you're coming from a good perspective too because you got nothing to lose because you're still pretty yeah. small. It's like, you don't, you burn some bridges, it's like, whatever, because a fuck. Yeah, right? I'll burn as many bridges. I don't really care, man. It's well, <laughs> shit. What do you uh, keep on your bedside table? My bed is small as hell, so uh, there's a bottle of NyQuil actually right now. Oh, really? You're on that? That's your version of the syrup? Mm, nah, <laughs> I just need it to sleep sometimes. Yeah. Uh, cause I don't really get a lot of sleep, so I need that shit to sleep. It's pretty bad, like, a dude speaks told me I need to lay off that. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah, that's that, that could be scary. As soon as you start relying on something to go to sleep, that's how I'm with weed, man. If I can't fucking yeah. smoke, it's so hard to go to bed. Yeah, yeah, no, I feel you. I need to chill with that shit though, cause my like little kid, kidneys are a little fucked up. Right now. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, what do you do? You do any anything that helps you like relax or anything? Is there anything that you do to like get your mind right, or are you just working all the time? Uh, I'm just pretty much working all the time, trying to make new shit, cause. I just want to keep, like, kids. The kids seem to fuck with my shit. Like, they really fuck with it. So I just want to keep making product that they could they could wear and have that shit as, like, a full uniform. Got these pants coming soon. Okay. But, um, yeah, I'm just always working, man, 24-7 for the most part. When it comes to, like, going beyond, you know, like, more simple shits like jackets and shirts and stuff like right. that, do you have, like, uh, cut and sew aspirations? Do you, do you think of your, um, the brand becoming something like that? I want to do a lot of cutting. So the problem is like, is money, and then my, I don't have some of the resources. I still have to. I'm still looking for. But yeah. I, I can still make a cutting so jacket or whatever, but it's like the money. I got the money for it. It's just like you put all your money into this jacket, then you can just release the jacket. And you can't release right. the whole collection. So. So have you have you ever had anybody offer to like partner up with you to help you like make the brand bigger? Uh yeah like a few investors or whatever but i'm not i'm not going down that road ever yeah like my mind is real focused as to what i want to do like i don't want anybody's help like uh, i got a homie helping me pack orders right now though but i don't want anybody's anybody's help or like really too much advice i just want to do like what i want to do yeah that's real yeah because that's what got you to this point in the first place yeah, is no help at all like being focused i mean besides design work besides design help i don't need anything else man See, that's that's interesting because I think like a previous generation would have just been really gung ho, excited about the concept of just getting huge. But it's like right. younger brands now, I think that they've seen streetwear brands get huge that's and they wrong. see how it's not necessarily the best thing. Even that's though, kinda where my mentality comes from. Right. Basically just seeing everybody else fuck up. So I, I think I know what I want to do and just like the level I'm at. I'm real happy where I'm at now, to be honest. Yeah. You ever see any brands who like came out you were a fan of them and then they just fucked it up that come to mind um i'm gonna say fresh jive okay but they probably fucked it up like well yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, but i mean they yeah. they were killing shit like i used to go to reserve and cop the little three for 20 tees on like they might have been black friday every year uh -huh. and then now they don't they might have done like a little comeback now but they don't they don't make clothes anymore yeah they don't make clothes anymore at all i don't think so really? they might have tried to do a comeback like six months ago but i don't know if it went through Right. But yeah, I don't think they make clothes anymore. No, I remember hearing about that too, but I'm not 100% sure if they're like still in the middle of it with that shit. Yeah, I hope so. That was one of my favorite brands, man. What do you think of the Yeezy shit? 
easy. Like just the whole the whole thing in general. I seen you tweeting about it a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> I was just tweet. I was just tweeting out a funny video of me wearing a fucking um, little funny robe thing. <laughs> I'm not. I don't care about it though. The black Yeezys are cool as shit though. I tried to get those, but um, I what's don't really care too much about what whatever the little Yeezy shirts and shit. What's the most you ever spent on clothes or on sneakers? Sneakers. Let me see. Uh, I think I got three pairs of clear Air Forces. Okay. Let me see. I might have spent like four or five on those or something. Uh huh. I'm not really too big of a sneaker fan. Really? I got the little Supreme, the Supreme Fives. No, I got the. Some huffs on right now. Okay. But Supreme Fives, I think I spent like two on those. So When you were working at Huff, how did they feel when you would all of a sudden be beefing with dudes like the hundreds or whatever who <laughs> they, they were, probably have a relationship, at least to some extent, right? It's all funny. They laugh at it. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, it's, they're cool as hell to me. They treat me like a family. <laughs> they that, thought it was funny. Yeah, that's dope. It's good that they're in that position that they can laugh at it, you know, that it's not that big a deal to them. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. No, nah, they don't care, man. They're chilling. Yeah. They're cool as fuck. Shit, I think I just uh, I just hit the end of my list of questions. Word. You got any other topics that are important to you? What you been up to that, that we need to know about? I just been working. That's really all I do. I don't have too much of an exciting life, man. I really? stay in my little small ass studio and just just chill. I go to the homie's house and work on shit. See, that's good, man. Once you get too many distractions, it can be really rough. Like, I, I'm running so many different businesses at the same right. time and shit that it's like, you know, you, you end up spread thin. And I, like, for me, it's like I have to put myself on like a really strict schedule in terms of like, I need to be able to get this amount of stuff done. Being right. your own boss is hard, right? It's hard. I mean, it's real, I mean, it's real hard. It's cool, though. That shit is real cool to know that some kid in another part of the, the world is wearing your shit, man. Yeah. Well, you, do you, uh, did you have, because like for me personally, like I had that mentality since I was real young that it was like I, I knew I couldn't really have like a job. I knew I couldn't, right. that I had to get into the position where I could be my own boss right. and do my own thing. Were you always that kind of person where it's like you knew you needed to be? Definitely. I knew I had to have my own shit because yeah. I'm just, I'm not the type of, I don't want to work for anybody. I don't want to work under anybody or take any orders or nothing. So I knew I had to have my own shit. And I'm real glad this FTP shit's working out for me, like yeah. on that type of level where I could just do that that shit by itself i think my thing is that i'm just too negative i hate everything Same so then here. it's like it's hard i remember like when i first found out about like karma loop and this is maybe in like 2006 I 2007 karma loop man <laughs> yeah you ever get fucked over by them no you probably never sold to them right no nah, never yeah trash but i remember when i first found out about it that i was like interested in some of the brands and i started to like look into them more and more and then I just became convinced, like, yo, this shit is whack. Like, most of these brands don't have any fucking substance to them. All whack. And it's that, it's that anger. It's, like, the fact that I actually didn't like it. I actually fucking hated it. And right. that, like, drives you to do something. If you don't like anything around you, it drives you to stop everything. So I think, like, me being really negative yeah. about everything that I see was ultimately, like, a fucking asset because it made right. me want to go out there and do different things. That, that helped me a lot, too. I'm real negative, too. Yeah, I could see that in you, that you might... Not not that you're, like, a negative person because I think with I, both of us, we're, like, successful, so we right. we have a certain level of, like, contentment. But at the same time, it's, like, we talk about, you know, walking around. Like, you go to Agenda, it's, like... To a lot of people, Agenda is really fucking cool. Like, oh, look at all these great brands. Yeah. I do not relate to that. I hate it, man. <laughs> yeah. That's why I'm, I paid all this money. I'm going to do the little booth, I think, in whatever month it is, and just fucking diss everybody. All right. I mean, they need that, though. They need people to come in and stir shit, That's shit up. They called me and told me they need me, I think. So. Yeah, probably, yeah, because they know that they need the hot shit. I'm, I went there, like... Maybe a year and a half ago, two years ago. I haven't been in a minute. I, I said I would start going once we started doing booths, but I, we didn't get right. there yet. But it was like a fucking... The way I described it afterwards, I was like, yo, it was like a ratchet war. It was like a war to see who could be the most ignorant. It's like... I don't know how to even explain it. Because that was the time period where everybody was going so hard with just big words on hats. Right, right. And then I see motherfuckers with gold letters, and it's like metal affixed to the hat, and it's yeah. like $150. And I'm like, this is the stupidest shit I've ever fucking it's seen. It's crazy. I yeah. don't even know what people make anymore, man. It's embarrassing. But it's like when a brand doesn't have an identity, and they don't have anything to go on, and like they don't have any substance, then they start doing stuff like that right. because it's just a competition, you know? Exactly. Yeah. Well, streetwear game's fucked up. <laughs> but hey. we got Zach from FTP out here trying to trying to solve things who do you owe a, a shout out to who are you trying to thank shit i don't owe anybody but um like shout out to like anwar um my homie kobe his death precision uh phil from dirtbag right adam from foul play and um and shit shout out the whole goth money i guess i don't owe anybody shit though but shout out to all those people i just named and a few others can um, we end this with um 
what, what the, the other FTP song that, that Brandon Began, my homie, he keeps playing it. It's uh, the Curb La Goop one. Yeah, we can. You want to end with that? We could do that. I've heard this song five fucking million times playing from my room, because the room next to me, because my roommates always listening to it. Yeah, we could do that, man. Yeah, shit's fire. All right, well, thank you very much to Zach from FTP, Fuck the Population, coming through. Where could they find you online? What's the, the Twitter and the Instagram and shit? Uh, the brand, brand Twitter is at FTP. And then the Instagram is... Uh, it's really... F- it's at FTP? Yeah, it was hella hard to get. How the fuck did you get that? It was in high school, like 2010, like emailing Twitter every day. It, the, the shit was unused, though. It was right. Somebody had it, but it was like unused. But it took me like eight months to get it. Well, I'm real happy I got that shit. Damn. You ended up having to pay for it? Nah, nah, never. Damn, you got lucky then. I'm fucking, I want the Instagram handle, Adam22, with the... Two two the I numbers. Think I got you with that. I got a little. For real, you know how to do this? I got to connect over there because it's just an like, unused one, and I fucking yeah, instead I got, I got my shit spelled out. T W E N T Y T W O. It's kind of confusing. Can get it free by tomorrow if the, if the dude is responding. For real? Yeah, yeah honestly. Um, All right, let's get it. And then the Instagram is is at fuck the population it's okay. spelled out and shit. Hell yeah. All right. Thank you very much to Zag. This has been No Jumper. Uh, you can check us out weekly or bi-weekly. We're just trying to keep it weekly. Uh, doing interviews with all the most important, or the, not the most important, but the most interesting, the most relevant motherfuckers in the game, streetwear, hip-hop, whatever. So tune into my shit. Check us out. Subscribe to us on SoundCloud, iTunes, and YouTube. And uh, thank you very much to Zach for coming through and doing this. I think we all learned a lot about uh, one of the more interesting anti-streetwear streetwear brands out there as the motherfuckers are saying in the press so uh thank you zach of course man yeah peace